here in the Ross Sea, and one of the real beauties of studying Weddell seals here is we're getting to study a species in a place where they, they really work quite well. And I use the analogy of a, a doctor getting to study a healthy patient, and it's nice to know how a, a healthy person works if you want to try to help the sick. And so in a lot of places in, in work with wild animals and conservation, we're working with populations that are endangered or have had some bad things happen to them and we're trying to figure out how do you save them. Well, it's very helpful to have studies of populations that work really well. We're working in a very pristine environment, one of the more pristine marine systems on Earth. It serves as a baseline of information over the last 30 years of how do they work when they're working well. Should things change down here and the system go in some other direction if we exploit the fish too much or if the climate were to change down here, we would be able to see the signal in the population. This study started in 1968, so it's, it is one of the longer running studies uh, of a long-lived mammal. There are, there are some that are longer, but most are not. And so this is certainly a very special data set that's been collected by quite a variety of people over the years and we're kind of the, the current group that's that's in here and has the privilege of being uh, the, the caretakers and the collectors and curators of the data uh, and the ones driving the project right now. But we're really part of a long legacy of people doing this work and caring about the animal. We do two major activities during the breeding season when they're available for study. And the one is we're tagging individuals. Each animal gets a unique number assigned to it, much like a social security number or something in people. And then that allows us to keep track of who's still alive and with us each year in the study area. Who's having babies? How old are you? Because we know when you were born, you were tagged as a pup. We know just how old you were because we know you were born in 2000. Therefore, in 2010, you must be 10 years old and we can keep track of every year who's, who's had pups, so we know how many pups they have, we know how long they live, and so we get basic information about their life. The other thing we do is we are out weighing pups and weighing mothers and learning about the body mass. Maybe we'll be able to, at some point to learn to pups that are born bigger or to bigger mothers uh, survive better. Is there an optimum weight to be? We can also start relating that to the environmental conditions. Are there some kinds of years that are better than others? Is it better when it's a really icy cold year for a seal or is it better to have it warm or is it like Goldilocks, is it better to have it somewhere in between where it's just right? We also have some other things we do that are um, quite interesting that we look to going forward where we're, we're studying genetics of the seals and working with some geneticists at the university. And we hope at some point to be able to start to link those genetic traits. So are there certain genes that some of the seals have that let them be better than others at giving birth or gaining mass or what have you? Because we have an animal that, that is so approachable and so tolerant of our work, it just lets us gather information on large numbers of animals. We're able to truly sample virtually every pup that's born. We're also able to really know, therefore, who's had a baby and who hasn't. And with some of the analytic tools that are available for analyzing data from animals that are tagged and have individual numbers assigned to them, we can really learn a great deal about all kinds of things about their lives.